All right, welcome. It's the 24th of May, it, or 25th of May at 2 a.m. UTC. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Reminder that we abide by the Jenkins Code of Conduct. Be nice to each other. Um, and uh, thanks for being here, everyone. So topics that I had on the agenda included, let's see, I'm gonna bring up, share my screen and we'll look at it together. Okay, so sharing screen now. All right, so you should see a thing titled weekly release change log, helping, et cetera. We see it. Okay, great. All right, Meg. Diraj. All right. So topics that were on my mind, generating the change log for Jenkins weekly releases. This is an area where I need help, um, where we it would be a real benefit for us to have multiple people able to do this. And so my thought was let's use today's session as a working session. And what I would like to do is go through it once myself and then have either Diraj or Meg go through it to see, okay, can somebody else do the same thing so that we're confident others can do this? Uh, then we would do something similar in next week's meeting and have whoever that person is be the one who actually submits the change log. Oh, cool. And I would love to do it, but I am absolutely buried. Okay, so then you're not a candidate and that's, that's okay. We're open to, and if nobody's a candidate, I still want to record it so that I can share it with others and say, hey, Here's, a, here's an yeah. opportunity, because I Great. think we can do this during this meeting and get it completely done. So it's, it's, it's a small thing and relatively straightforward, and the how we do it is the more important thing than the precise details of what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, so then I've got a Mark's News topic on my kidney donation that's coming up and ways that people can help. Diraj, were there any topics you wanted to add to the agenda? Well, not specifically today because I'm more interested to know about how I can help you. So that's why I joined. All right, great. Okay, well, so then, uh, Meg, any topics that you want to add? Nope, this looks good. Okay, so then let's let's get started on this one. And Diraj, are you based on a Linux development environment, Windows, or Mac OS? Linux. Okay, good. So this will be this will be second nature to you, and it works. It works. It, that's the natural way that I do it. So this should be a perfect thing. I propose. Are you interested in doing being the change log generator, at least one of potentially many? Um, can can you first of all tell me what it is actually? I sure can. You bet. So the the Jenkins change log is that's a, a very good lead in excellent question <laughs> the Jenkins change log is this on the download page we have a link here which talks about what the content is of each week's weekly release and this change log is what is is the the data that we will create today is what generates this web page so it talks about how in Jenkins 2.293, there was a change made to allow builds to complete when using fingerprints to track items associated with the build. Okay, that's good. And then in Jenkins 2.292, we see that there was an update of stapler from version 1.263 to this other number. And there were changes related to pipeline builds and removing bundled plugins and build progress status animation. These are the kinds of things that are commonly expressed in these change logs. And Whoa. what these change yeah. logs actually, oh, go ahead. Yes, I was just, uh, I'm, I'm able to understand what you're saying, yes. Super, okay. And, and this change log that we're seeing, a prototype of it is actually generated for us automatically from the content of the pull requests in GitHub. So this is an example of a pull request that was submitted to a previous Jenkins weekly release. And here is 
the proposed changelog entry that the tools automatically extract for us. So, so we get the benefit that other people do much of the writing for the changelog and certainly they, they provide the content that then the tools extract for us and tell and, and give us a prototype that we can use to, to define the final changelog. So we, I will run some, we'll run some tools. Having run those tools, we'll then edit the resulting text file. We'll then generate the Jenkins.io site ourselves and look at it, see if it looks correct, check that it's well behaved. And, and then if it does, we'll submit a pull request for the change log. Right, I understood. So these, uh, did details will be extracted from the PRs that have been merged in past, right? Correct. Yes, exactly. Okay. 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 So, and what about this uh, community reported issues? The, like, if you can see 2.293, in that it says one times of Jenkins 65665, one times of this. This is also automatically generated, right? It, that's that's a very good question, and so so what you're asking is that what about this and these three icons, and this community report issues and these three icons are actually uh, part of what's called the rating system. We have a facility that allows Jenkins users who are running a particular release to give feedback to us without the overhead of a bug report, without all the work of other things to say, for instance, if they click this image of the sunshine, you'll see the hover text tells us no major issue with this issues with this release. So when I click that, it pops up a dialogue that says, thanks. And it incremented by one. Now, if I click this one, it will say, oh, you had it. And let's first cancel. If I hover over it, I, the text is, I experienced notable issues. And so if I click this, it asks, please provide the issue number for of that's causing the problem. And so in this case, if I were to, if you could see here that there were 13 users on 2.292 that, that entered Jenkins-65611, this thing, as a bug report. And that that set of this problem actually is what caused us to do 2.293. Uh -huh. So so this rating system helps us to know what are the hot problems for users, which things are getting in their way. Now we get junk in here sometimes, like for instance, this Jenkins-69. If I open that, you're going to see it has nothing to do with anything on this this is a bug that was fixed 15 years ago so people can and do spam us and we have intentionally chosen just to ignore spam in the rating system it's just not been a big enough problem for us to do anything other than just ignore it any questions so far this uh, definitely looks very interesting. So users go to the website and in this particular page and uh, click on the icons and report what they were facing in the current version of Jenkins, right? Correct. Yes, that makes sense. And this this storm cloud here, if we hover over it, it that's the worst of all things. That says there was a, a problem that was severe enough. I had to revert to a previous version. And, and this rating system that we see is available not just for weekly releases, but is also available for the stable long-term support releases. So when I look at the long-term support release change log, here we see, oh, with 2.277.4, there were 38, 38 reports of a rollback required and 28 that encountered what they, they rate notable issues. And you can see the list of issues here. So the, the rating system is quite helpful for us to understand without the overhead of making someone submit a fully detailed bug report. 
understood that makes sense to me so so that we've we've seen the rating system now what i think we ought to do is let's let's look at generating the how the how this thing is generated so it is generated from it's generated from the contents of the jenkins data oops jenkins helps if my hyperlinks are working doesn't it sorry just a minute So we need the Jenkins repository. That's the, the Jenkins core. We need the, the, that's the core repo. We need the, oops, Jenkins dash infra. Oh no, this is wrong. It's Jenkins CI. Help if I check these instructions before I type them, wouldn't it? Okay, the Jenkins infra slash Jenkins dot IO. Whoops. Docs repository. And we need the tool that reads from the Jenkins slash Jenkins repository and from GitHub and can write a prototype change log that we'll use for Jenkins.io. So those three repositories. So core repo, oof, wow. Core repo, docs repo, and this is a basically a tools repo, a tool repo. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's just copy this one. And all right, so start with my directory is empty. So if I do a git clone of this, And there are ways to make this clone faster, et cetera. I didn't bother with any of those. If someone wants to know about reference repositories and how to make things go much faster, we can certainly talk about that. Okay, then I need to clone the Jenkins.io repository. And this one, I absolutely am going to use my tricks to make it clone faster because I don't want us to wait the time I think it's infra jenkins.io. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what that just did is I just cloned a 500 megabyte repository in a few seconds because I used this minus minus reference thing. Okay, so now I've got the core repository, the docs repository, and now I need the tools repository, which was this one. So git clone. Okay. So the, the crucial instructions are actually in the changelog generators readme file. And it's easier if we, if we look at this from a web browser. So let's look at it there. So here's the readme. And what it tells us is this tool creates core changelog drafts, and we're going to focus on weekly. So the crucial script is generate Jenkins changelog. And I prefer it in Docker. So we're gonna focus on using it in Docker. The reason I prefer it in Docker is because then I don't have to worry about installing specific tool versions, like which version of Ruby is required or which version of some other generator. All I have to do is I export my GitHub auth, which I've already done, and I'm not going to show you because it's secret. And then I run this command. What's happening here is it's saying, okay, Docker run, 
set an environment variable GitHub auth with the value of the GitHub auth variable I exported, mount a volume for my current working directory as slash GitHub slash workspace, remove things when I'm done, this minus RM, and run the program, the Docker image Jenkins slash core changelog generator. So let's try that. Now this is assuming that the, the release has not already happened, which it has not in this case. So let's go ahead and do that. And the same exact text is available here. I could have copied it just as easily from this location. Okay, so Docker run, GitHub off, minus V, current working directory, which is, oops, and now I've already made a mistake here and I'm gonna show you my mistake and what happens when I hit enter on this mistake. It says, oh, oops, you didn't pass a version number. This isn't a Git repository and therefore something's wrong. Well, I'm in the wrong place. Instead of being in core changelog generator or in, in this parent directory, I need to CD into the Jenkins directory because it's going to use the contents of the commits here to help it understand what should be in the change log. So now let's try that same command again. Docker run minus E GitHub auth equals map the current directory, which is the Jenkins repository to slash GitHub slash workspace and run the core change log generator. So what it's doing now is it says, oh, you didn't tell me a version number, so I'm gonna use the last commit. That means it's going from Jenkins 2.293 to this current commit. And it's telling us what it's doing. So it's found some things, it found something from Angelique, and now it wrote a draft YAML file of the changelog. And if we edit that file, we'll see it, oops. So here's the draft change log. And this thing has is a YAML file with data. So the date, this would be the date of the release and only be set to tomorrow because that's when we'll release it. And then one entry per pull request. So ta and it, it does some sorting for us. So it puts major bugs first. And then after major bugs, it will put uh, major RFEs and request for enhancement, and then bugs, I believe, then RFE, it, it does some really nice work here. And then it also places comments for things that have been intentionally listed as not needing to be in the change log. Questions so far? Um, you said tomorrow's date, but you actually have what's yesterday's date in half the world. Uh, right, so I have to update this when I put oh, it into okay. the final thing. Absolutely, okay. all it, all it can do is put today's date in. Oh, I okay. then have to, and when I when I do this same exercise for something like Jenkins LTS, I will put the destiny the expected release date of the LTS release. Okay, but you don't put that in the YAML file. You put that in. The... Well, I will put that in the YAML file, oh, okay. but this is just the prototype. Okay. Other and, questions? Uh, these are, yes. oh, go ahead. So these are the bugs that have been reported and uh, with the help of the tool, we have created a draft automatically. So how is this going to help us in making that page, which you showed me earlier, having build icons and those? So, yes. Good question. So this, uh, a ch uh, uh, this changelog.yaml is the prototype source that we will use to add content to a, a data file in the Jenkins.io repository called weekly.yaml. And the weekly.yaml is, is the data file that's used to generate this HTML page. Oh, yes, understood. So, so the, 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 for me, the elegance here is ah, I'm not actually writing an HTML page when I write the changelog, I'm just making data entries. And this data then gets turned into a, a, a workable and usable HTML page. Hmm. 
Right, right. Yes. Okay, so so what we've done up to this point is we've cloned the three repositories, we've run the generator to create the prototype. Now what we need to do is we need to convert that prototype into weekly.yaml. Okay, so that step is something like this. So notice that I'm in the Jenkins directory for now. So I'm in the Jenkins core. I need to change to the documentation directory because I'm going to create the change log in the docs directory. Now, and in this case, um, let's see, get remote add, um, let's see, what shall we call it? Get remote rename origin upstream. Okay. So I'm, I need to, I need to use, I need to have my, use my own repository for this. So I'm going to switch. So get remote add origin, uh, git at github.com jenkins.io.git. Okay, and now if we say, if I pull everything, okay. And I have to do one more little bit of tweaking because I like things a certain way. What I'm doing is declaring that I want my branch name master to actually represent origin. Okay, so here we have it. The last change was this GSOC 2021-05 20, 20, updates. I'm gonna create a branch, change log dash 2.294, and now I'm ready to do my edits. So I'm gonna bring up my editor and we're going to edit content underscore data change logs so notice that it's this is data not pages and then we're going to bring up weekly and i'm going to bring in at the same time jenkins slash jenkins or slash change log dot yaml so what i'll have in the top half of my screen is the prototype and in the bottom half of my screen is the current weekly. And the most recent release there was 2.293. So I'm gonna put in some extra space and have a working area where I can do 2.294. Questions so far? Okay, then let's go ahead. Okay, so release is 2.294. The date will be tomorrow, the 20, or your date today already, Diraj, right? You're already the 25th. Yes. And then I'm going to just take one change. Let's see, let's take one change at a time. into my text editor and you can use any text editor you want visual studio vs visual studio code whatever i happen to be most familiar with this particular editor all right so this is the proposed text now my job is to make the proposed text conform to the style guide and the style guide is in this docu in this file right here in style guide. And it will tell us, this gives us good guidance on how we do it. So use the present tense, use specific prefixes for specific types of things. 
when up when describing an upgrade always include both the previous and the current version number in the upgrade and use complete sentences and end them with a period so those kinds of styles are here and and then how what should the ordering be it's it's included in the style guide so I'm going to take this one and it says, okay, this one says fix an SSH CLI authentication Okay, so I have to put it like this. And my general technique is go find something else that already said that kind of thing and copy it. And now we have to, I have to do some research to decode where, when was that reg regression? So regression in to do, the data here tells me which pull request it was and which issue it's fixing. So let's go look at that, that issue. Ah, help if I copy and paste correctly. Okay, Jenkins CLI unable to read SSH. Ah, and here's what we've got it. So it says, the user says they upgraded from 2.280 to 2.285. And now we should be able to see so downgraded to 283, so the problem is likely in 2.284. And as we read further in this, we would just see the description. Oh yes, it is something happened in 2.284 and here is the problem. So the regression was introduced in 2.284. Okay. So, and now I have to worry that CLI, oh, it's actually pretty common. Okay, let's see. Command line, because Meg has taught me that I should avoid three letter acronyms when I can. <laughs> Such an ogre. Okay, so there is the first item inserted into the change log. Any questions so far? So just to confirm, by regression, we mean that this current issue was introduced in which version of Jenkins? Correct. A regression in this case is a way of saying worked correctly prior to that version, broke in a version, and this is now restoring the correct behavior again. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Very good question. So let's do the same thing again, this time with the next one on the list. And it says, okay, so it says another major bug. Um, bridge methods are no longer present. And so what the proposed change log says restore bridge methods used to retain backwards compatibility. And now I don't know if this one should be flagged as a developer issue or not, because it's, I'm not sure how users will see this. We like the change log to be expressed in terms the user will understand. So fix SSH command line interface authentication. I think a user will understand that. I'm not sure that a user will understand restore bridge methods used to retain backwards compatibility. Maybe we should take a look at it and let's see if we can find better words that we might use to describe it. As an example that might work for a user. So So James describes it. Oh, yes. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
I think, yeah, see the challenge here is I'm not quite sure how to describe it because what happens is attempts to compile the promoted builds plugin fail. And that probably means that the plugin will also fail at runtime. So, so it's now, but, but it's not just promoted builds promoted. Yeah. It's not just one plugin. It's that any plugin, and that's why he described it as bridge methods, right? So, so what we've got is something that fits for developers, but I, hmm. Maybe what we should just do is describe it as fix uh, no such method error when right. loading certain, when using certain plugins. Would that, that be a better description? Or could you leave the bridge thing, but just have like a quick parenthetical, the bridge methods that are used to ensure that such and such or is it backward compatibility used to retain backwards compatibility for plugins? So something like this, so rather than reporting, oh, not that. Um, it's not just reporting, it's actually going to fail, right? It's, this is going to make right. something work that would. Right. And it's a plugin that's not brought up to date. What backwards compatibility is affected here? I don't know that. Well, in this case, it's that a current release of the promoted builds plugin will not run correctly in this environment with with until this is fixed. Right. So restore bridge methods used to retain backwards compatibility rather than reporting no such method error at runtime. For a plugin. Yes. Well, yeah, so okay. the no, no such method error, I suspect, is, is going to just be generally displayed. They won't, they won't necessarily know that it's for a specific plugin. So okay. another alternative might be a fix. No such method errors when using plugins that rely on bridge methods. What do you think of that? Ah. And it's so bridge, so the the ideal solution, I mean, in the you know, ideal world, the plugin would have been modified to not use that method. No, no, actually, oh. I think it's intentional that the, that method is allowed. Oh, okay. So just trying to, trying to find good phrasing. Oops, now we don't need two, two hard stops. What do you think of that phrasing, Meg? Might be. I'm still understanding then why this is backwards compatibility. If it's, if you're saying it's not, it sounds, I mean, that backwards compatibility sounds to me like ideally the plugin should have been written differently. But this ah, I see work. what you're saying. Okay. But, so what if we take the but word I have no backwards idea what I'm talking out? About. Yeah. Fix no such method error when using plugins that rely on bridge methods for compatibility, regression in 2.278. That's probably good enough. I mean, it's, you know, your average user, it's not gonna make, but if they've seen that error, they'll recognize it. And if they have okay. it, it doesn't matter, right? Let's let's hope for that then. So we've converted one. Diraj, what do you think? Does that work for you? Yes, totally. Okay, so let's take the next one then. All right, so this is an enhancement. And the proposed text is remove the requirement for locking the queue when adding a new node. That's pretty good to me. Now users, 
I think we can safely assume that they'll know, understand the meaning of the word node in this context and what a queue is, et cetera. So in that case, I'm, a, I'm not attempting to explain those concepts, just bringing it in. Right, if they don't know that much, they're in trouble in the change log anyhow, probably. Right. Okay, now another enhancement. This one is to lessen the severity when of the message that's displayed when an update is not available. Fair enough. Now, Meg, is IE the correct thing here or is it EG? No, it asked. Or no, well, do they mean do you mean for example, or do you mean a given release line? In other well, words, LTS. So in this case, um, latest version of a given release line, there are two release lines, weekly and stable. The stable is also called LTS. So I assume that's correct usage then? I get or I mean is is what he means to say is LTS even on the latest version of an LTS release line? Is that what he's really saying? Correct. Why so why don't we change given to LTS and lose the parent? Well, because it could be it could also be weekly, right? Oh, okay. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and assume that's okay. Let's take okay. on the next one. All right, next one. This one has some interesting noise in it that we're going to have to fix out. And I'm never quite sure why sometimes they get noisy like this, but it's easy to fix. It's just YAML. Was that supposed to be a bullet list? Is that what it is? Or? I, I don't know why the tool generated it that way, but it did. And it's easy to fix. So the, the new line here, each one of those is in fact a, a line break. So if I want to make it first look like what they intended, I just do it like this. Mm -hmm. Sorry that you're having to watch me do these edits, but they help me help me see things better before before I actually propose what I think this thing should be. Right. No, it's useful to see how you actually do it. Okay, so this one has the nicety that it can also illustrate the concept of references and how to refer to an upgrade. So notice that it says bump remoting from 4.7 to 4.8. So that's what the changelog entry should be, is it should be upgrading from, and we could even see if we've had one of these before. There it is. This is how it was described previously. Ah. upgrade from and so I just go back in time and grab one of those and say upgrade from remoting 4.7 to remoting 4.8 and then there was this little thing here the references this allows us to embed additional references into the end of the line on the output. So if we look back here at the change log, you'll see here, for example, on this update stapler, 
there's one hyperlink for the pull request, one for the stapler change log, some version, and another for a different one. So when I need to add multiple multiple links to the end, I use this references um, references data type. And I like to put the issue number. Okay, and then this has in it the link to the change log for 4.8. So I put that here as that and remoting 4.8 change log. Okay, now I don't know. <laughs> Now I have to think about this because in the past we haven't bothered to enumerate each of the bugs in in the uh, in the change log. I thought there was a, the other remoting, the one you copied. I thought it had a bullet list after it. So here it says upgrade from remoting four six to remoting four seven. Maybe there's I, another I one. No, I was hallucinating. I'm uh, this one talks about, well, and see these previously used internal, which probably should be used here as well. Because this really isn't visible to users. Ah. Right? I mean, it, it, this, it is an important update, but it is internal. Right. And then the question is, do all the, do these things matter to users? And when I look at them, I don't think so. I think we should just call it Yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and take that out for now. Any objections? Nope. Now it's entirely possible that that's a mistake. So next one though, let's do it. So this one is an RFE to improve localization and Angelique is the author and she's updated terminology for French for the word controller. Uh -huh. Now RFEs would go above internal according to the style guide. So I need to put this above this RFE internal. Okay, and then bump bridge method annotation. This one, I think should just be suppressed because I don't think that users care about an internal upgrade of a component. So I'm going to take that one and turn it into a comment like these other comments. Uh -huh. Oops. So if we look at these comments, you'll see many that are like that, where they say, bump this or remove this usage of something that's not visible to a user or fix something in a test. And so I'm going to make a same comment here that says PR5501 And it is bump bridge method annotation. Okay. 
So the reason I put it here as a comment, it won't show to the user, but I put it as a comment to be sure that if others ask, hey, why did you do that? They, they can see that I at least thought about it. Likewise, I need to do the same thing for this front end Maven plugin that was done as part of 5490. So I copy that line, call it 5490. So Diraj, are you seeing what I'm doing? And yes. any questions so far? No, no, it, it is making sense to me till now. Okay. So there we've got 5490 and 5501, both included. Now we've got one more. And this one is update Xstream from 1.4.16 to, okay, and this one, and now this is me knowing some things that others may not know. Xstream is a particularly important library. So usually when we update it, we acknowledge that update in the change log. And sorry, I, I don't know how to highlight it other than by saying, yes, it's, it's important enough that when we update it, we, we note that. So here is the example that I used before. Let's copy this. All right, so we did it as an RFE. And we're just going to steal that same text. And instead, it will be from 1.4.16 to 1.4.17. And the author is M. Ramon Leon. The pull request is 54.98. And the issue, no issue was, oh no, the issue is there. There it is, okay. Okay, so we've captured RFE, RFE, 54986. Okay, oops. Okay, now we've got to do the change log and it's probably 17 instead of 16. And let's double check that that actually resolves to the change log. There it is, good, release May 13th, okay. All right, so I think that's correct. Now, oh, now let's see, how did... Yeah, that's how it was done before. No long list of anything, just updating it. Okay, questions so far? So, as you said, the extreme library is very important and we should not put it uh, among the comments. So, how do I know uh, if I'm working on it by myself that this is the one that is important? The easiest way is if a library is being updated, you can search backward through the change log and see if it was mentioned previously. So, for instance, if I look backwards for spotless, I should see, all I see it in is comments. If I look backwards for structs, all I see it in is comments. So the first indication for me is look at other libraries and see if other copies of the library in the weekly change log, see if they were described as a separate item or as a comment? Good question, right. very good. And also while we're on it, I just also wanted to know if there's 
any way I can do this searching in VS Code as well? Yes, yes, absolutely. So you can search backwards. Just it, this is just a YAML file. So you bring it up in VS Code and use whatever your preferred searching techniques are in VS Code. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you you'll find I I suspect you'll find the VS Code YAML editor quite comfortable, and yes, that it, it will behave the the way you expect. So that that makes it really great. In my case, I I haven't made the switch to VS Code because of some tools in this particular editor that make my life much easier. But but VS Code is great for to editing YAML files. Use it by all means. Awesome. Okay, so I think I think we've completed it. I need to look at the diffs just to be sure. So there it is, 2.294. And added all the content. Okay. So now, oops, I'm now going to run the make and this relies on me having been able to build the doc the jenkins.io site already i assume that you've been able to do that diraj uh yes okay good so i'm going to do make run and what this will do is it will generate the site um, it will generate a subset of the site based on what it sees. And then when I click load on the page, it will generate those pages as necessary. So right now what we're seeing is the, the site builder constructing itself on this, on this machine. And it'll be a minute or two here while it's working through that. And this scripts bundle exec, oh yeah, what this does is asks for what is the current version of Jenkins that's being delivered. It asks a question to the, the Jenkins Update Center, extracts the current version, then it will use that later. So now it is pulling in the NPM Docker image and now it's running Austruct this thing right here, which is the site generator. And now it's generating the site. And now if I open my web browser, we should be able to go to that computer port 4242. And here it is. So here is the site. And now if I click download, now this one is showing me 2.293 and I would like to see 2.294. So I need to make a change here. That's a good thing to have remembered. Okay. Uh, force. So I have a, oops, I have a script that I use called force latest core that lets me tell the generator to write a very specific file into this location. So I'm gonna run that thing now. 2.294. And then I'm just going to rebuild the site so this is going to generate, instead of with the most recent Jenkins release, it's going to generate, assuming the most recent release is this number that I told it it is. So back to this site, the current actual release is 2.293. 2.294 does not exist yet. And so in order for me to see something that does not exist yet, I had to update this, this file. So now let's go the the files that are mentioned in that script. So now let's reload this page and there's 2.294.
So fix SSH command line interface authentication and notice the bold red, the larger red dot, that means it's major. The smaller other colored dot here is not major. And then, oops, I have a mistake. Internal should always be below. And so I need to go fix my mistake. So my mistake is in this file. And the mistake was that internal is the lowest priority. So this thing should be moved below X stream. Now, when I did that, if I refresh this page, it should show it correctly now. X stream update is first, internal is last. Question so far? Yes, so just to check if I got this right or not. So the pull request that we have, uh, or the issues or everything that we have mentioned here, uh, those are the reasons why we introduced 2.294. And uh, on the icons that we see, the three icons, those are just a way for the users to, you know, pitch in their views on how this new version 2.294 is uh, working out for them, right? Correct, yes. Okay, okay, got it. Yes, and I think if I click these, they may even increment, but it's unhealthy for me to click them because I'm not actually running 2.294. But yes, yeah, I think you've said it exactly. Those icons are there because they'll be there on the final page. And this is the data that I had entered. Okay, thank you. Now, when I submit the pull request for this, it's asked that, hey, please submit the pull request. Oops, I need the sizer command, just a minute. I'm missing a very helpful program that lets me set window sizes. So, Sizer will let me set this thing to that width. Okay, now I need to capture a copy of this because readers who are looking at this pull request won't find it easy to read the YAML file. It's much easier for them if I give them a picture of how it will look. So here I've copied that into this image. And now when I submit the pull request, I'll paste this image in so that they can see how it looks uh, when it's rendered. Okay, so I'm gonna commit the change. So change log 2.294. And now I'm ready to push. And for me, it's easier if I do this now with GitHub with the GHPR command, because it does an awful lot of things for me. So GH is the command line Git interface, and I'm going to do GHPR create, and it's going to ask me some questions. So which should be the base repository, the base repository, the one that is the, the ultimate destination for everything, the base should be Jenkins-info slash Jenkins.io. Now, which, where should we push the changelog branch? We should push it to my fork. And now here's the, it's asking for the title. And we're going to say, yes, we'll take the title as is. And I could either press E to launch an editor or enter to skip. And I'm gonna hit enter. It's now ready to submit my pull request. So now it's submitted this pull request. And if we go here, we will find that pull request. So here's the pull request for the changelog. And what I'll do is edit this and 
back to my copy thing here, copy this and paste it there. So there it is. So this is the proposed change log for 2.294. It will look like this and the changed files look like this as the YAML file with all those comments. Now, reviewers, it's, it's not, it is quite common for reviewers to detect a mistake I made and say, hey, could you fix this? Could you fix this? Don't be, don't be intimidated by having mistakes detected in what you're creating. That's what happens. Now, Diraj, I wonder if maybe what you and I should plan is that we'll do this next week, but have you drive it and me watch. Would that be okay with you? Uh, what do I need to do? Can you please? I, do I was going to have you do the same steps I did mm -hmm. next week for the week, weekly release, but I'll watch mm -hmm. over your shoulder and talk through it and we'll do it mm -hmm. together, but this time with you typing instead of me. Mm -hmm. That would be really helpful for me as well. That I just think sense. that way I'm still available next week. You and I can go through it. And even if we fail terribly, we've learned something in the process. Of course, yes. Hmm. All right. Sorry, I took the entire hour for this topic. My apologies. Other other topics that we need that are hot for us? So Diraj, this changelog generation for me is a crucial thing that needs help on this ideas of things where people can help. There were some other suggestions Let's see in, for instance, so generate the weekly change log was the one. Reviewing documentation pull requests is certainly another place where you could be helpful if you've got time and capacity. The other is preparing docu for the document for the contributors summit. And this one, I think Zinab Abu Bakar is wanting to take it on if she can. So if you don't mind not being the, the leading the documentation track, but just being a participant, I think she's interested in leading it. Sure, that works for me. Great. All right, Meg, anything else we need to discuss? All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and call this a, a session. Diraj, we'll plan on doing Next week, we'll do the, you and I will do the change log together for 2.295. Awesome. All and right. Also, I wanted to congratulate you for completing four years at Cloud Bees, I'm, if I'm not wrong, right? I'm sorry, what was that? So I'm, I wanted to congratulate you for completing four years at Cloud Bees. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind of you. Yes, it, it's, I've hit my fourth year anniversary. I'm also, yesterday was my 60th birthday. So mm -hmm. yes, it's been a momentous wow. time. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. All right. We will talk to everyone next week. We've also got office hours Thursday where we'll talk with Zinab. Um, Diraj, no reason for that you have to be there Thursday. You are certainly welcome to attend again if you wish to. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.